G'day, it's Rusty from Rusty's Metal Cut Signs and Designs, and welcome to part three of our video series on how to build a CNC plasma cutting table. And in this video, I'm going to show you how we constructed the X and Y axes frame rails and the components that I used in order to get this far. And then we'll move on and we'll actually make the table that these frame rails will sit on. Just a quick recap of the videos in the series. Uh, part one, we talked about what we needed to build a CNC plasma cutting table, and that was a plasma cutter and some CNC electronics that's actually going to drive the torch around to follow a tool path. And then in part two, I had all the electronics on the bench wired up and we ran the motors and you can actually see them turning in response to following a, a, a tool path on the software on the laptop. So the aim of the build was to create a table where I could fit a half a sheet of steel on it. Now, a standard sheet here in Australia is 2400 mil by 1200 mil. So I thought if I could buy a half a sheet or get a full sheet cut it in half, it would give me a 1200 by 1200 piece of steel to work with. So with that in mind, I created some design drawings based around an 1800 millimeter frame rail. So basically the footprint's 1800, and I thought that I'd easily get 1200 mil inside, and then if I got, if the frame was too big using the components I've got, I can always trim it down at the end. So what I started with was this frame rail is 100 by 100 by 3 mil painted box section, and yes, it might be a bit of overkill, but I need something solid and rigid, and I, that's why I went this way. So the first thing I did was, after I cut these to length of course, was to mount the stepper motor. Now remember the Y axis has two rails and each rail's got its own motor to drive it up and down, which is the gantry sits on top of the two Ys and the X sits on above that. So I needed to know where the stepper motor was going to fit and I started off by putting the bracket level with the edge and then from there we mounted the motor into the bracket and then that became our reference point. So from there we now wanted to mount a ball screw. Now I chose a 1500 millimeter ball screw and these ball screws are, if I just quote my numbers and make sure I give you the right de details, they're SFU 1605 ball screws. So it's 1500 millimeters long the 16 refers to the diameter being 16 millimeter, and the 05 is the five millimeters of pitch. So for every revolution of this ball screw, the ball nut will move five millimeters. So by spinning the motor, you need to tell the software how much travel per revolution your motors have. Um, and that's just so when you tell the the tool path says it's got to go 100, mil 100 millimetres one way and then turn or change direction. It needs to know what 100 millimetres looks like and, and you calibrate that inside the software later. Okay, so I, I, my reference point was the bracket here, the stepper motor on the end. Now, the stepper motor being on this bracket, the shaft ended up where it was. Now, what by that I mean is with the ball screw next to it, they didn't line up. There was like a 14 mil gap between the, the motor shaft and where the ball screw uh, alignment was. So I needed to make some 14 mil spacer blocks. So once I positioned them, I was able to get the two shafts to line up perfectly. And to join them together, you use these little couplers. Now this, uh, it's a vibration damper as well. And it's actually got some grooves machined in it. So you'll be a bit careful when you handle them. And they've got a, a clamp screw on either side and for added security, I added a um, five millimeter grub screw as well. because the motor has a flat on it, so the grub screw will line up with the flat. So it's just an, an extra layer of, of um, security that it doesn't slip. And so with that in mind, I aligned everything square down, down the middle. And one thing I did do was I used the bracket bolt holes as a template, and here's one I prepared earlier. Uh, no, not that one. I've lost it. Here it is. Okay, so I used Inkscape. Now, I've, I've probably mentioned Inkscape before. Inkscape is a free 2D CAD software program. Now, CAD stands for Computer Aided Design, and this is no more than a design. 
and it just happens to be that I used the outside square is 100 by 100 to reference that what that looked like and then the base plate I drew the base plate and aligned where the holes were with the slots so then I could use that as a template so I whack that on there center punch the holes where I marked them and that become my template for mounting these brackets so I knew where the bracket was everything else went from there so that's that's a really handy thing to do once I'd got the ball screw mounted we needed to put and and you're actually seeing this rail side on. This is X, uh, sorry, this is the Y1 rail. So the front of the machine effectively is over here and you're looking down this side rail. So the motor's on the outside. Now sitting on top of this Y axis frame rail is a linear rail. Now this linear rail is a HGH20. So it means it's 20 mil wide, 20 mil high. And sitting on top of these is a thing called a linear bearing. Now this linear bearing has ball races inside. That's why the little plastic keepers in so they don't fall out. And this will sit, if I just, I'll just chase it. So this linear bearing sits on top of the rail and this is what runs up and down to move my gantry, which has got my x-axis on it. So what I needed to do was I needed to construct something that sat on here. So what I went for was another piece of this 100 by 100 by 3 mil box, 160 mil, because 160 mil just happened to take two bearings. And I'll just put this bearing back on here and I'll show you how this actually sits on here. So let me just do that. Now with this gantry trolley, as I call it, we've got two linear bearings sitting on top of the, the linear rail. And this is what runs up and down. And in real life, this gantry trolley will connect to this ball nut. So when the motor drives the shaft, the ball screw rotates, the trolley is connected here via a bracket and here's one I prepared earlier and this is the bracket that bolts onto there and it bolts onto the side of the uh, gantry trolley so as this rotates this whole assembly moves up and down so with the bracket bolted between the ball nut and the uh, gantry trolley by rotating this effectively I'm simulating the motor driving you can see this gantry trolley is now moving up and down and it's moving up and down on this linear rail. Two things to be uh, mindful of when you're aligning the ball screw and the linear rail is to make sure they both run true down the face that they're bolted to. Now mine happen to be in the middle. You can offset them, it doesn't matter how you align them, as long as they're aligned dead square down this face and also the linear rail on the top. And the way I got the linear rail to run true in terms of parallel to the side face was I drilled and tapped the first hole into the, uh, the, the top face here, put a dial indicator on the little gantry trolley, ran it up and down, zeroed the other end, locked that in, drilled and tapped it, and then worked my way back to the middle. So then work out when the dial indicator was running true off this inside face. When we got to the, to the halfway point, you might have to move the rail a little bit. Once you got a dead spot on, clamped it either side, drilled and tapped it again. And it was a process of moving up and down the linear rail to, to ensure that it runs true up and down. Now, that's the same for both Y axes. And I'm pretty comfortable that I've got it within one or two thou over the full length of this 1500 mil and I've run the, these and tested them and there's no binding, there's, there's no tight spots and I'm, I'm pretty comfortable that it actually runs nice and even and smooth. So that, that's, that's obviously a consideration and that's something that's very important to get, get lined up correctly. Um, okay, so what I've done is I've built, this is the Y1, I also have built Y2. So now I've got my two Y rails. The next thing to do is to build the X axis and I've put that together as well. And I'll just show you what the X axis looks like now. 
Now this is my x-axis and this is as you're seeing it from the front of the machine looking at the x-axis. There's a y-axis gantry trolley sits under here and there's a y-axis gantry trolley sits under the other side. So this is sitting up above and the same principle applies. Um, I still had to mount the stepper motor on the bracket. I needed a 14 mil spacer block under the, the um, ball screw bearings because that's the offset in the two shafts. In this occasion, the Z axis where the torch mounts is going to sit on this plate and to support the plate I thought it was better to run two linear rails one above the other and I've got the same bearing style, I've got a, 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 a linear bearing one below the other <clears throat> and then I have a plate that bolts to those and again those eight bolts, I've only got four in just to clamp it up those eight bolts, I took the, I took the dimensions from the, the bolt centres transferred that into Inkscape, drew a, uh, a one to one scale image saved it as a PDF, printed it out, cut it out, stuck it on the you know, I mean, you get the, you get the idea. And the same principle applied to aligning these linear rails is I worked out where I wanted the rail to be for the first one, what gap I wanted, and the bottom one. Started with the first one. Because the ball screw was already here, we attached the linear rail bearing to the linear rail and ran that up and down with the dial indicator, clocked it off the face, got it aligned both ends in the middle as well and then we just kept the gap the same, did exactly the same thing put the linear bearing on here, clocked it off the face, ran it up and down and I'm comfortable that it's, it's within a thou and the acid test of course is with the two bearing linear bearings bolted to this plate was it going to bind or not and I'm, I'm happy to say that it, it, it runs fine and I've also made a bracket up here that bolts between this plate that holds the Z axis and the ball nut. So as the motor turns, and this has got a motor connector, so it's a bit hard to do, as that rotates, the plate moves. And I set this up this way because as you see the machine from front on, you're basically at the front of the machine looking into it. When you home the machine, it, it, it runs the X axis over here. It runs the Y down to the front. So I needed to know where this was going to sit. So I've got it because under here is the x-axis gantry trolley. I wanted to use the most amount of travel. So I've got this will line up here on the edge, which then allowed me to locate my, my, my ball screw. So I've worked out that I've got 1360 millimeters of travel on my x-axis and about 1350 on my y going up and back, so easily covers a 1200 by 1200 sheet of steel that's sitting on the, on the bed. Uh, so with that in mind, I've left this piece, this bracket tail too long, deliberately because, because this motor's running up and down, I need to have a cable running to the Z axis. Well, it's gonna have to move up and down, so I'm gonna use some drag chain probably in a little, little carriage or something on the back so that the end of the drag chain will attach to this. So this will be trimmed once I, once I know exactly where it needs to be in terms of size. I'd rather have it too long, cut it back, than have to weld a piece on. Now the Z axis bolts on to the X and this backing plate is the one that bolts the backing plate with the bracket onto the, the uh, linear bearings. I've duplicated this backing plate and made a plate that bolts onto the Z axis and luck it has it, the, the bolts all missed each other. So I'll just show you how that goes on. All right, so I've just bolted the Z axis unit onto the backing plate, so the two plates bolt together with a spacer between them. I've just disconnected the coupling on the motor so I can just show you what happens. So as the Z axis drives, you can see that the Z axis is moving up and down along these linear rails. So this is how the torch is moving across the, the material. And remembering that the torch will be mounted onto this, onto this front fascia block and the torch will be, be below this, this. So that's what it all looks like when it's all bolted together in terms of how it moves up and down the carriage. So now we've got the basics of the two Ys and I've got the X axis here. 
I'll just put it together and it won't quite fit properly on the bench because this bench is not wide enough but I'll just put it on here and I'll just show you the principle of how it's going to fit and then we'll go on to making the cross members that support the two Y's and then we're going to build the table that this whole thing will sit on. Um, so let me just put that together and I'll show you what it looks like now. So now as you can see this is assembled if you like. It, it's got the y, the two y axes here, this is the x axis sitting on top and it sits on these what I call gantry trolleys and this of course is the z and this whole thing will slide up and down on the two y's. I can't move it at the moment because the, the bracket is bolted to the uh, ball nut but I have tested each of the individual rails uh, for driving the shaft which drives this um, gantry trolley up and down. I've done it both sides. I've also done the x-axis sitting on here and some of the tests I was doing, I actually ran these ball screws at 5,000 millimeters a minute. Now I don't believe I'll be cutting it that fast um, but it's nice to know that I've got a bit of speed there and they will actually go faster. <laughs> So, yeah, well, I'm happy with the way it all works. So the next step now is, oh, and, and by the way, these gantry trolleys will bolt to the underside of this x-axis, and you can imagine this has got to be out here, and there'll be uh, four bolts, so I can bolt it through here into the top of this. And again, where's one I prepared earlier? Um, I've, I've made up a stencil so I can cut these templates out. These are the bolt centers so I know they're perfect. So I can position them on here, center punch and drill them, center punch and drill the, the top side of this uh, gantry trolley and I know that they're gonna line up. So then the next thing to do is, I said strip all this. Um, we, we, now, we know what this dimension is so I never cut the x-axis any smaller. It's 1800 as well. I have a little bit of room on the end but for the sake of Cutting 50 mil off the end, I, I'm not really concerned about that. And what it does is leaving the 50 mil on, it, the motor's not hanging over the end. I know these Y-axis motors hang out the back, but this is the back of the machine. No one's going to be walking around here in normal, normal use. So I'm, I'm happy to leave that there. So the next thing to do is make the two cross members between the, the, the two y frame rails at the front and at the back and again they'll be drilled and bolted um, gives me an opportunity to ensure that this thing is dead square this way and also level onto the table and the, the table will be 50 by 50 by 3 box section the same outside dimension as this 1800 by 1800 it'll be gusseted uh, a lower rail in for support and that's the next thing to do so um, probably I'll wrap this video up here and then in part four what I'll do is, is I'll sh I'm not going not to spend all the time showing you how I'm going to weld this thing together. I'm just going to, I'll make the table and then I'll make the two cross members to fit this and then in, in part four of the, of the video series what I'll do is we'll, we'll have this assembled and we'll actually put it all on and line it up and get it being all square and then it'll be time to run our cables and I guess start to make this thing move up and down and backwards and forwards. So if you like the video, a thumbs up would be appreciated. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, the subscribe button's down here. And if you have any questions uh, regarding what I've, how I've built this or what the parts I've used, uh, happy for you to put them in the comments below and I'll answer all your questions. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next one.